Zacapu is in Mexico. One market day is very much like another. Women bargaining over the best vegetables, picking out the ripest fruits, buying local delicacies, and haggling over the merest farthing. These people are Indians. Their market is the center of their lives. Here they exchange both the variety of produce grown in the different climatic regions of their country and the gossip from their native villages. A fruit we hardly know in Europe, guavas, are cheap and very popular. Everywhere you look, chilies, hot pepper vegetables with which the Indians spice all their food. Beans form an important part of the Latin American diet. European vegetables such as lettuce and carrots have been transplanted and are sold together with traditional corn cobs, marrows, squashes and peppers. Potatoes first discovered in Peru. A prickly cucumber called chayote. Juicy root vegetables called jicama. The inevitable piles of variegated maize and one of the most important of all Mexico's gifts to the world, tomatoes. Europeans had never heard of tomatoes until the Spaniards came to Mexico. The very name is taken from the Aztec, tomato. Today, considerable quantities are exported to the United States. The people eat enormous quantities of beans an essential source of protein in the diet of a subsistence farming community. Another delicacy to reach Europe from New Spain was the pineapple. Subsequently planted in the Canary Islands, the fruit soon became very popular all over Europe. So, with the discovery of Central America and the Caribbean, Europeans tasted one new fruit after another. Pineapples, mangoes, papaya and coconuts. Cocoa trees grow in the steamy forests of southeastern Mexico. They need a lot of heat, but being very delicate, will only grow in the shade. The cocoa pods which sprout from the trunk have tough shells which turn yellow when they ripen. There is no fixed harvest because the seasons hardly vary in the tropics. So all the year round there are ripe pods to be picked. Though cocoa was discovered in Mexico, the country now produces only a fraction as much as other countries in South America and Africa. Inside the shell, the grains are bedded in pith and look like red kidney beans. Once they have been separated and washed, the beans are fermented and then spread out in the sun to dry. At this stage, they have an unpleasant bitter taste. In some places, Indian women still make cocoa in the traditional way. First, they roast it to bring out the flavor. Then they grind it into a fine powder with a stone rolling pin. After this, it is mixed with water and patted into a thick paste. Then, with more water, whisked in a wooden jug. This is the old Indian mixture, made with water and honey.
One reason why Mexican chocolate was so delicious was that the Indians added a flavor as yet unknown to the rest of the world, vanilla, a parasite orchid which grows in the jungles of eastern Mexico. In the pods of the flower, the Totonac Indians found a miraculous sweet oil. In the sun, the oil becomes concentrated and the perfume is overpowering. Vanilla is one of Mexico's most valuable exports. In this courtyard alone, there is over 1,000 pounds worth. Most of this vanilla is still grown in the jungle in very small quantities by the Indians. It is then bought by middlemen who employ the same Indians to prepare it for export. The Totonacs keep a little vanilla and make out of it intricate little baskets and figures of animals to sell to the shopkeepers of the town. Because of vanilla, the Totonacs are the richest of all Mexican Indians. From the point of view of cultivated area, maize is by far the most important crop. It covers some 55% of the farmed land and is the staple food of the population. Each small farmer knows that his family is entirely dependent on its cornfield. As the poorer Mexicans live almost entirely off maize, the success or failure of the corn crop is the most important thing in their lives. It is cooked and eaten in all sorts of ways. Though it is usually made into tortillas, flat round pancakes, which the Spaniards call the bread of the new world. Not all the products first discovered in Mexico were edible. It was here, for instance, that Europeans first learned about rubber, which grows in the tropical forests. Almost 40% of the world's henequen, or sisal plant, which is made into ropes and cloth, comes from the peninsula of Yucatan. It was in Mexico, too, that the world discovered tobacco. The Spanish conquerors soon became addicted, and through them, the rest of the world. It's widely believed that tobacco was discovered by Drake and Raleigh in Virginia. In fact, by the time the English settled in North America, the Spaniards had been smoking for over 50 years. Some of the priests in New Spain tried to stop the spread of this dangerous habit. They considered it a vice and warned that those who smoked too much would suffer from discolored mouths, dirty tongues, throbbing hearts and liver pains. But the people kept on smoking and by sending tobacco back to Europe introduced the old world to one of the oldest customs of the new. And tobacco soon became big business. The Indians still roll the same primitive cigars. Perhaps this old man does not realize that the pleasant vice of smoking was invented by his ancestors, who for centuries cultivated a land which gave so many new and wonderful products to the world. <laughs> 